Greetings, my fellow veterans entombed in a metal box, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video about the forces of the Space Marines. I recently made an episode about dreadnoughts in general, and some details about the Castroferum pattern, which is the most common type of dreadnought, and also talked a bit about their gear. Today, I wanted to present to you the many variants of dreadnoughts which serve in the various Space Marine chapters, since there's quite a few of them, and they're quite different from one another too. So without further ado, let us learn more about dreadnought variants, shall we? The Castroferum pattern dreadnought can be equipped with a wide variety of weapons and equipment other than the standard loadouts. Many times these loadouts have their own designation and are intended for different battlefield roles. The most well-known of the Castroferum pattern dreadnoughts are as follows. The Assault Dreadnought This one replaces the standard dreadnought's ranged weapon with another dreadnought close combat weapon. These dreadnought variants are an uncommon sight within many Space Marine chapters, due to the fact that removing the dreadnought's ranged weapon arm means it forfeits its ability to engage targets at a distance. This, when combined with the dreadnought's relatively low speed, means the dreadnought will be very vulnerable to enemy ranged fire. These types of dreadnoughts are used by Space Marine chapters that favor drop pod assaults such as the Blood Ravens chapter, dropping the Dreadnought directly into the enemy's position where they can do most damage. The term Assault Dreadnought is not a common one. Instead, most Assault Dreadnoughts have no special designation. The Hellfire Dreadnought This one replaces the standard Dreadnought's close combat weapon with a missile launcher, trading its close combat ability for long-range anti-vehicle power. The advantage of the Dreadnought's missile launcher over its Space Marine equivalent is that it is capable of moving at full speed while still laying down a barrage of missiles. Hellfire Dreadnoughts are usually referred to as Fire Support Dreadnoughts, or they may not be given a special designation at all. The Hellfire Dreadnought's missile launcher carries up to 8 crack missiles that are capable of severe damage to enemy vehicles and unlike the missile launchers carried by Space Marine Infantry, the Dreadnought is fully capable of firing accurately while moving. The Hellfire Dreadnought is capable of replacing the twin-linked autocannon with most Dreadnought-ranged weapons, such as a set of twin-linked last cannons. A sub-variant of the Hellfire Dreadnought, known as the Firewind Dreadnought, is armed with a set of twin-linked heavy bolters. The Siege Dreadnought is designed exclusively for assaults against fortified positions. Some Space Marine chapters have equipped their armored Dreadnought Battle Brothers to siege fortresses and lead their assaults upon other fortified enemy emplacements. They are equipped with either an Inferno Cannon or a Flamestorm Cannon for clearing out enemy infantry from bunkers and an assault drill arm for grinding through ferrocrete in only a few seconds. This arm also includes a built-in heavy flamer, so that once a hole has been drilled, the dreadnought can pour superheated promethium into the bunker or pillbox complex. Siege dreadnoughts are specialized units and are only deployed when a chapter needs to break through a stubborn defense line or during close quarters street-to-street -street fighting within a city or town. A Siege Dreadnought's standard weapons loadout includes an Inferno Cannon, an Assault Drill with a built-in heavy flamer, smoke launchers, a searchlight, and reinforced ceramite armor. In some cases the Inferno Cannon can be replaced with a multi melta and two hunter-killer missile launchers can be attached using special sponsons to the Dreadnought's carapace. The Ironclad Dreadnought That has been optimized specifically for close combat. It possesses reinforced ceramite plating on the front of its shell, and can be equipped with multiple different weapons intended to aid in melee combat. 
ironclad dreadnoughts are usually armed with a dreadnought close combat weapon with an underslung storm bolter, heavy flamer or melta gun and a seismic hammer. These dreadnoughts can also be armed with a hurricane bolter or a dreadnought chain fist, which is nothing less than a dreadnought sized chain fist. They may also be equipped with up to two hunter killer missile launchers and a specialized iron claw assault launcher that fires different types of grenades. These dreadnoughts are used by many Adeptus Astartes chapters for close combat situations and during sieges, although it is not as effective as the Siege Dreadnought. The Mortis Dreadnought is a variant of the standard Imperial Dreadnought and is commonly found in the armories of the Dark Angels chapter and their successors. The Mortis pattern differs from all other Dreadnought variants except for the Hellfire Dreadnought that makes use of the two long-ranged weapon arms. These dreadnoughts make use of two sets of long-range weapons that are always the same. These weapons include a set of twin-linked LAS cannons, twin-linked auto cannons, twin-linked heavy bolters, or two missile launchers. The Mortis dreadnought is capable of laying down a tremendous amount of firepower upon a target, and since the dreadnought's body is such a stable firing platform, it can continue moving while firing accurately. There's also several Castroferum dreadnought variants that are used exclusively by certain Space Marine chapters. Some of these variants are The Furioso Dreadnought is a variant of the standard Castroferum dreadnought and is used almost exclusively by the Blood Angels and their successor chapters. The Furioso Dreadnought replaces the single long-range weapon carried by standard Dreadnoughts with a second Dreadnought close combat weapon. True Furioso Dreadnoughts, used by the Blood Angels and their successors, use special Dreadnought weapons known as Blood Fists and Blood Talons. These Dreadnoughts can also be armed with two specialized weapons used only by the Blood Angels and their successors, known as the Magna Grapple and the Frag Cannon. These weapons making the Furioso Dreadnought more effective in medium-ranged combat. The Furioso Dreadnought also has two specialized variants that are found in use, again, only among the Blood Angels and their successors. These include the Death Company Dreadnought. Blood Angels Dreadnoughts are not immune to the effects of the Black Rage that plagues the Sons of Sanguinius. When a Blood Angels Dreadnought falls to the Black Rage, it becomes nearly impossible for the chapter to restrain him, and as such he may rage out of control for days until the chapter's tech marines can rig a device to disable him. The chapter's sanguinary priests can then judge whether or not the dreadnought's Astartes occupant should be sedated until the next battle or relieved of his life so that another may take his place. If the occupant of the Dreadnought is still sane enough to follow orders, he will be moved to the chapter's death company, where his Dreadnought body will be able to withstand tremendous amount of damage, and his unending rage will result in the deaths of many enemies. The Librarian Dreadnought When a Blood Angel's Librarian is critically wounded in combat, they can also be placed inside the armored sarcophagus of a Dreadnought. These Dreadnoughts, known as Librarian Dreadnoughts, are outfitted with built-in psychic hoods and are equipped with a force weapon, usually a force halberd, in place of one of the Furioso Blood Fists. These Dreadnoughts are still capable of unleashing their powerful psycher abilities and are protected by the Dreadnoughts' thick hull. Librarian Dreadnoughts are extremely rare among the Blood Angels and their successors, and even rarer among the other ranks of the Adeptus Astartes chapters. And now, back to other variants of the Castroferum. The Doomglaive Dreadnought The Doomglaive Dreadnought is one of the rarest and most advanced Dreadnought variants in Imperial service, and is used exclusively by the Grey Knights chapter, the secret chapter of Space Marine Psychers that serves as the chamber militant of the Inquisition's Ordo Malleus. 
The Doomglaive Dreadnought, like all Grey Knights Astartes, makes use of the Aegis, a complex network of protective prayers, runes, and other wards which are inscribed upon the chassis of a Doomglaive Dreadnought and psychically charged to provide better protection from the powers of the warp. While a Doomglaive Dreadnought is a fearsome opponent to face on the battlefield, he can provide more than just fire support to his battle brothers for he is also able to support them with enhanced psychic defenses. This is possible as a result of the cyber circuitry that is incorporated into the Doomglaive Dreadnought sarcophagus, and which can link its own Aegis field to the psychic defenses employed by nearby battle brothers, thus creating a series of reinforced wards that is much stronger than what the individual Grey Knight can project on his own. The Death Watch Dreadnought is a lethal war machine containing the remains of a venerated space marine who had been seconded to the Death Watch, the chamber militant of the Ordo Xenos. The rarity of a member of a kill team being interred within the adamantium sarcophagus of one of these towering war machines is almost unheard of, as such an honor means that this Astartes will remain forever in the service of the Death Watch rather than returning to the chapter. Death Watch Dreadnoughts can be armed with all the same weapons as a standard Castroferum Dreadnought. The Space Wolves Dreadnought is a variant of the Castroferum Dreadnought used only by the Space Wolves chapter. Within the adamantium shell of each Space Wolves Dreadnought lies the remains of an honored hero of the chapter, broken in body but not in mind. Many of the Space Wolves' dreadnoughts contain venerable heroes of legend, warriors who have taken to the field of battle in Russ's name for thousands of years, their wisdom as deep as the ocean, and their intuition as sharp as the Kraken's teeth. Regardless of his history, each warrior entombed in a dreadnought is determined to wage war against the enemies of the Primarch until Morkai finally claims his due. The dreadnoughts of the Space Wolves are sometimes armed with strange and fantastical weapons used only by the wolves of Fenris, such as Hellfrost cannons, blizzard shields, and Fenrisian great axes. And these, my friends, have been the most well-known Dreadnought variants of the Castroferum pattern. I will also be making a video on famous Dreadnoughts and their exploits, because who can forget the mighty Bjorn the Fell-Handed, for example? Which of these variants did you find more interesting? Let me know in the comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe for future videos. And if you'd like to support my channel in a small way, please check my Patreon page. The link is in the video description, and you can get rewards as well. I thank you very much for watching, and wish you a great day. The Emperor Protects.